First, I wanna welcome every one of you. In late October, my husband and I flew down to Oklahoma and we stayed at the Hard Rock Casino Hotel for the non yehi performances and for the descendants of the Nancy Ward Association too. When I returned to Seattle, Joseph Warren asked me if I would do a presentation for our Cherokee community of Puget Sound. And I'm here today to share non yehi with you. Quoting from Nanyehi website, Nanyehi, the story of Nancy Ward is based on the life of Becky Hobbs' fifth great grandmother, Nancy Ward, beloved woman of the Cherokee, who was first honored as a Cherokee war woman, then as peacemaker in the 1700s. She was first named Nanyehi peacemaker in the 1700s. And um, she was later known as Nancy Ward. The music chronicles her life, 1738 to 1822, her struggles, her loves, her family. And so up on number on the slide that I have up on the screen right now is the order of what we're doing, my goal. <laughs> so it's the history of non Yehi of Nancy Ward but I'm not giving you a history lesson. Uh, it's too complex. <laughs> it's, too, it's very intense and it would take, I would think it would take a many weeks to do that. Um, number two, Non Yehi the Musical by Becky Hobbs and Nick Sweet. Three, my lineage to Non Yehi. Four, descendants of the Nancy Ward Association. Five, photos. And six, the Trail of Tears Association as well. Utilizing the many sources for the history of Nancy Ward, I realized it was a history lesson in itself. And I realized that I would present a condensed presentation. I reached out to Becky Hobbs through an email that I didn't even know if she would receive it. She did. <laughs> And what a sweet lady she is. She sent me the script of the show and all of the music from the show. I had actually purchased her CD, uh, I think a year ago, but the music that she sent to me was some of the music that they actually did on the show. So it was a little bit more, I guess, filled out different singers. So first, um, I wanted to say that Becky Hobbs really created all the music and the lyrics to the music. Her husband, Dwayne, and I'm not sure really how to pronounce his last name, so I hope I do it justice. Skiegwa, musical conductor and arranger. The musical story, the story itself, is written by Becky Hobbs and Nick Sweet together. Becky Hobbs had, has had a stellar and an amazing career. I feel it's important to cover her numerous accomplishments. Oklahoma is definitely a garden of many various artists who were raised there. Becky Hobbs' bio reads like this. Whiskey voice Becky Hobbs is a one of a kind. She's a gifted songwriter as well as a captivating entertainer. On stage, she plays some rockin' keys, yet she can rope you in like an Oklahoma cowgirl with From the Heart Ballads. Becky has performed in over 40 countries, including nine in Africa. Her songs have been recorded by Alabama Conway Twitty, number one hit, I Want to Know You Before We Make Love, George Jones, Loretta Lynn, Amy Lou Harris, Glenn Campbell, Wanda Jackson, John Anderson, Janie Friquet, Lacey J. Dalton, Mo Bandy, Shelley West, Holly Reddy, Shirley Bassey, Jane Oliver, Ken Mellons, Charlie McLean, Johnny Bush, Demi Lovato, Kristen Chenoweth from Oklahoma, Scotty McCreary, Home Free, and the Cherokee National Choir. She is the co-writer of Alabama's hit, um, Angels Among Us which has been recorded by numerous artists and used by many charities, charities throughout the world, including St. Jude's Children Research Hospital. 
the buckaroo, and that's how she signs her name. Buckaroo, as she is called by her friends, was born and raised in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. She is a citizen of the Cherokee Nation. She started playing piano and writing songs when she was nine years old and in high school formed the Four Faces of Eve, the first all-female rock band in the state of Oklahoma. She spent two years in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, playing in Southern rock band Swamp Fox, then landed in Los Angeles for nine years. Kim Fowley of the Bad Boys Music was the first publisher to sign a couple of Becky's songs. Ella Freddie's husband, Jeff Wald, was her first manager. He got Becky a record deal with MCA in 1974. Later, Becky signed with PN BNB, I was thinking of Martha's Ballet, but BNB, Artist Management, Sherwin Bash, Mace Newfield, and Alan Bernard. And Becky was the first, one of the first artists on their tattoo record label. During the urban cowboy craze, Becky signed as a writer with Al Gallico. Thanks to Al, Becky got her first big break with Mercury Records in Nashville and had chart success with I Can't Say Goodbye to You, Honky Tonk Saturday Night, and other records produced by Jerry Kennedy. In 1981, Becky headed from Nashville for Nashville and shortly thereafter, thereafter recorded a top 10 duet with Mo Brandy. Um, excuse me, Mo Bandy. Let's get over them together. In 1988, her critically acclaimed all keyed up album, MTM, then BMG, produced by Richard Bennett, brought us Jones on the Jukebox, Are There Any More Like You, and Do You Feel the Same Way Too? In 1988, Becky's co written songs, You Are, recorded by Glenn Campbell and Emmy Lou Harris, was nominated for a Grammy in the Best Country and Western Vocal Performance duet category. In the early 90s, Becky's Talk Back Trembling Lips video, Curb Records, went to number six on the CMT. In 94, she released the Boots I Came to Town in album, which included The Haunting Pale Moon, Mama's Green Eyes, and Daddy's Wild Hair, and Becky's own version of The Angels Among Us. Becky was named Cashbox Magazine's Independent Country Music Female Artist of the Year for 1994. That same year, she was honored as the UK's Country Music Roundup, most promising international act. In 1996, Mary, Becky married guitarist, producer, songwriter, Dwayne Skiakwa. Dwayne played guitar with Glenn Frey for 16 years and also played with Paul McCartney, Don Henley, Joe Walsh, and many others. He produced Becky's 1998 from Oklahoma with Love, which got a rave review in People's Magazine. Swedish Coffee and American Sugar was released by popular demand in Scandinavia in 2000. And in 2004, Becky released Songs from the Road of Life, also produced by Dwayne. Best of the Buckaroo or Beckaroo Part 1 was released in 2005. It contains 21 of Becky's most popular recordings. In 2010, Becky wrote, Chalagi, We Are Many, to honor her Cherokee ancestors. The Cherokee National Youth Choir recorded it, and she and the youth choir performed it as Principal Chief Bill John Baker's inaugurations on November 6, 2011, and on August 14, 2015, in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, and several Chief Baker's State of the Nation address, along with Cherokee opera great Barbara McAllister. Also in 2011, Becky's CD, Nan Yehi, Beloved Woman of the Cherokee, was released. It contains 17 songs written for the musical Nan Yehi, based on her life of her fifth great-grandmother, Nancy Ward, 1738 through 1822. A Cherokee war woman then honored Peacemaker. Nick Sweet is the co-writer of the book. The musical won a grant from the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian in 2010 and has had productions in Hartwell, Georgia, Tahlequah, Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Kingsport, Tennessee, again Tulsa, Oklahoma, 
Greenville, Texas, again, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Kingsport, Tennessee. I wonder if I reprinted that twice. Excuse me if I did. Tulsa, Oklahoma, but I believe she's done one that many times. And again, <laughs> Tulsa, Oklahoma, because there's different years for all of them. And I didn't say all the years. In 2015, Becky's song, Celebrate America, won first place in the music category of the DAR, Daughters of the American Revolution, American Heritage Contest. Becky accepted her award and sang her song in Washington, DC. And in 2015, Becky wrote the theme song for Oklahoma Music Shop, a cable TV show which aired throughout Oklahoma. She hosted the first six episodes. Becky was inducted into the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame on October 16, 2015. Having devoted most of her recent time to telling the story of Nanyehi, Becky Ward was honored as Cherokee National Statesman at the 2017 Cherokee National Holiday in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Plus, she was awarded the Dreamkeepers Cultural Achievement Award at the Greater Tulsa Area India Affairs Commission in 2018. Additionally, in 2018, she co-produced and co-wrote the short film, Nanyehi, premiered at the Circle Cinema in Tulsa. It featured her signature song, Let There Be Peace. For the remainder of the year and throughout 2019, it showed at film festivals throughout the country, winning five awards, including the Nation Vision Award, Best Family Short Film, and Audience Choice at the Bare Bones Film Festival in Muskogee. The Pitch Award in the National Films Festival and Director's Choice in the Fort Worth mm -hmm. Film Festival. In April 2019, Nanyehi was inducted into the Oklahoma Movie Hall of Fame at the Roxy Theater in Muskogee, Oklahoma, USA. So, as Cherokee citizens, as Cherokee, we're very proud of her and her accomplishments. And so I thought it was best we go through them and her musical is stellar. Um, this is a picture of Becky and her husband, and they they played. They, they normally play in the pit of the orchestra pit. However, for the production that they did most recently at the um, uh, in Catoosa, Oklahoma. They, they didn't have a pit, so they had to do it in a, a separate space. Um, so as we begin, uh, I'm going to start with a song uh, okay. and play White Wolf. I saw the white wolf and he told me she will be one with them. This winter morning will bring us hope, will bring us
Nyan Yehi. The name Nyan Yehi means she who walks among the spirits. She was born in 1738 in the Wolf clan through her mother in the Cherokee town of Chota, which is now Eastern Tennessee. Growing up, Nyan Yehi was very influenced by her uncle from her mother's side, Adakula Kula, which means wood leaning up or little carpenter in English, who was an important chief of the Cherokee nation. Her uncle believed that the best chance for survival of the Cherokee people was to coexist with the British colonists. In the musical production, there was a green corn festival to thank the creator and create and celebrate the naming of the new piece of Choda. Nan Yezi's uncle, Atakula Kula. The festival is full of Cherokee villagers and young Nan Yehi and Chula, or Kingfisher, of the Deer Clan. They begin with a stick ball game. When the game was over, Nan Yehi and Kingfisher had a chance to talk to each other. It turns out that he had his eyes on her for a while. Kingfisher imitates her telling a story to young children in the forest. He said, quoting from the show, first, you are a water beetle using its fingers to make wiggly antennas and swim. And then a panther, his hands became claws and hisses like a great cat. And then the great buzzard, opening his arms wide and swooping. Nan Yehi was embarrassed and blushed. Kingfisher commented, that is why she's called Rose. And then he calls her Wild Rose. And they talk Sunday of getting married. Indeed, Nanyehi and Kingfisher did get married. They had two children, Catherine or Katie, and little fellow, who later was named Hiski Tihi, or five killer, after killing five enemy people in battle. In 1755, Nan Yehi's husband, Chula, was killed by the Muscogee Creek warriors in the Battle of Taliwa. In this particular battle, Nan Yehi helped her husband by hiding behind a log and chewing on the bullets one at a time. The purpose of chewing on each one was to create more damage in the person one shot. Otherwise, the bullet would shoot straight through its target. After chewing on each bullet, she would give each one to her husband to shoot with. Chula got shot and killed. For her courage, oh, Nan Yehi, excuse me, Nan Yehi grabbed his rifle and began fighting off the Muscogee Creeks. Her leading the Cherokee warriors to victory expanded the Cherokee territory in Northwest Georgia. For her courage and bravery, Nan Yehi was named Gi Ga'u. The name could be from Giga, which means blood, and Igeya, which means woman, beloved woman of the Cherokee Nation. With this honor, Gi Ga'u headed the Women's Council of Clan Representatives, which was one of two political bodies that governed the Cherokee Nation. Additionally, she held a voting seat in the Council of Chiefs. Plus, she was given absolute power over the fate of the prisoners captured in raids and battles. I'm taking us to our next slide. This is Nan Yehi. She had been ward awarded this feather. Here, I wanted to include um, her song that she sings. This is a beautiful point. So here she here is Nan Yehi. She's been given all these awards and she's just her heart is broken. husband with a brave and gentle hand The only man I've ever loved You 
gave your life for your people and the land This very land soaked with your blood Don't adore especially during the outbreak of the American Revolution. Atakula Kula had a son named Chiyu Ganisigi, Dragging Canoe. From the Tennessee Encyclopedia, I quote, Dragging Canoe, Cherokee warrior and leader of the Chickamaugas, was born in one of the overhill towns on the Tennessee River, the son of the Cherokee diplomat Atakula Kula. Historians have identified Dragging Canoe as the greatest Cherokee military leader. Even at an early age, Dragon Canoe wanted to be a warrior. He once asked his father to include him in a war party against the Shawnees, but Atakula Kula refused. Determined to go, the boy hid in a canoe where the warriors found him. His father gave the boy permission to go if he could carry the canoe. The vessel was too heavy, but undaunted, the boy dragged the canoe. Cherokee warriors encouraged his efforts, and from that time on, he was known as Dragon Canoe. 
English traders stopped in the Cherokee Nation to trade their goods. One of the traders was widower Brian Ward with his son, John. In the musical story, he saw Nanye with her two children. As he was always whittling wood, he had a horse that he had been working on. At one point, the children were by themselves near him, and he played with them with this little horse. When Nanye came by, he introduced himself and tried to give them the carved horse. Nanye said, no, thank you. And she also told him they had to leave. But Mrs. Lydia Russell Bean, white pioneer, said that Nanyehi's children could go and see her husband, Mr. William Bean's horses in the stable. After allowing her children to go to the stable, Nanyehi and the other white settlers all visited and danced in the musical. At the end of the scene, she told everyone goodbye. And once again, she politely declined the Brian Ward's gift of the carved, carved horse. Her uncle, Adakula Kula, told Brian Ward to be patient with Nanye He, as she loved her deceased husband so very much. Eventually, Brian Ward was able to make friends with Nanye He, and later they did get married. They had one daughter together, Elizabeth Betsy Ward. The Cherokee tribe sided with the British because they both shared a common interest to keep the American colonists from expanding into the Cherokee land. The Cherokee people were in a struggle between the Americans, the French, and the British. In June of 1776, the Cherokees participated in a Revolutionary War, joining the British in an attack on Charleston, South Carolina. The colonists of Charleston managed to push back the Cherokees, and the only English assistance the Cherokees got was the white traders living among the Cherokees. During less than a year, over 50 Cherokee devastated towns had been attacked. The crops destroyed and supplies were destroyed and hundreds of Cherokee warriors were killed in battles. As a result, on May 20th, 1777, the Cherokee leaders had to sign their first treaty with the white Americans where they gave up all the remaining territory in South Carolina. And only two months later, and another treaty, the Cherokees had to give up more of their land. Not all the Cherokees went along with those treaties. In fact, several hundred warriors and their families, which included British Tories and mixed bloods under the leadership of Dragon Canoe, moved to the extreme Western frontier and established five new towns. Some Creeks and Shawnee joined with them. Those Cherokees were called Chickamauguans because they had settled along the Chickamauguan Creek. According to Emmett Starr, Dragon Canoe, Abraham and Raven were the war chiefs of the Cherokee and the Chickamauguan area and had about 700 warriors. They had planned simultaneous attacks on the white settlements. Dragon Canoe was to attack Fort Colston. Abraham was to attack Fort Wadauga and Raven was to attack Carter's Valley. This happened on July 21st, 1776. However, Nanyehi heard of their plans and sent messengers to warn the white settlers of their impending danger. Dragon Canoe's attack met with a small contingent from the Holston settlement who killed Cherokee, 13 Cherokee warriors before Dragon Canoe retreated. Abraham successfully kidnapped Mrs. Lydia Bean the mother of the first white child born in Tennessee, her son, and a young boy from Fort Wada Uga. Emma Starr said her son was burned at the stake, but that is not the case in other accounts. Mrs. Bean was tied up in the, to a stake in the center of the Tuskegee, which was located just above the mouth of Teleco or Little Tennessee River, with firewood surrounding her feet. Nanye, he arrived just in time to use her authority to release Mrs. Bean. Nanye, he took her to her own home to tend to her wounds and protect her. Later, Nanye, his brother Longfellow, was able to return Mrs. Bean back to her family. <laughs>
I vow for every life you take A killing for a killing There will be blood There will be blood There will be blood There will be blood Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey ya Bloody fellow, double head, young tassel and the raven My warriors are behind me There's no white scout but the saving there will be blood, there will be blood, there will be blood, there will be blood. You drove my people from their homes to hunger and starvation. Your words mean nothing to us now except retaliation. There will be blood. There will be blood, there will be blood, there will be blood. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey ya. With total disrespect for life, all you left is death behind you. Strike the war pole, beat the drum, our tomahawks will find you. There will be blood, there will be blood. There will be blood, there will be blood. Hey ya, 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 hey ya. There will be blood, 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 there will be blood. There will be blood. Dragon Canoe was furious with his cousin and Nan Yehi. There is a scene in the musical that he sings, There will be blood surrounded by the According to Emmett Starr, in retaliation for the Cherokee attacks, North Carolina sent 2,400 men under Colonel Griffith Rutherford against the Cherokees, 200 Georgians under Captain Jack, 1,860 South Carolinians, and 2,000 Virginians under Colonel William Christian, who attacked and destroyed most of the Cherokee nation by burning their crops, stealing their property, and burning 50 of their towns, reducing the people to dire destitution. Choda, the home of Atakula Kula, and Gigagu Gia, was spared from destruction by Colonel Christian, the commander of the Virginia forces. When the Cherokees met with the U.S. officials, Nancy Ward was often present to the surprise of the assembled white men. In 1781, she addressed the U.S. Treaty Commissioners after settlers attacked the Cherokee towns. She believed that peace would come only if Indians and whites saw themselves as one people, and she thought only the people on the two sides could make this happen. In the musical production of Nan Yehi, Nancy Ward is quoted as saying to the commissioners, and here is part of her speech that was in the musical Nan Yehi, written by Becky Hobson Nick Sweet. This is from Elder Nanyehi giving her speech on the Long Island Treaty Meeting. I have come here today to speak for thousands of voices who will never be heard. Why? Because they have been different from each other. Do we not know, do we not want all the same thing? A good life for our children and their children? You Americans look down at women as though we are nothing, but we are your mothers. You are our sons. Our cry is for peace. Let it continue. This peace must last forever. Let your women's sons be our sons. Our sons be yours. Let your women hear our words. And Nanye, he in the musical continues to make the edited combined Hopewell Treaty French Broad River speech. I am glad there is now peace. I take you by the hand in real friendship. 
I look on you and the red people as my children. I hope my warriors will remember they all sprung from a woman and the children of the white and the red might be raised in peace. It is pleasing to me to hear the bloody hatchet is buried deep underground, and I shall, as long as in my power, keep my feet on top of it and prevent it from being raised. I rejoice that we now have peace and hope, and the chain of friendship will never more be broken. Nanye, he spoke to Five Killer, her brother, to take a message to the um, Mohi Council along with her walking stick so that the council would know that she wrote this message. Nanjehi was not strong enough to make that trip. From the script of the musical, Becky Hobbs and Nick Sweet, Nanjehi says to Five Killers' response, checking to make sure that is what she wanted, and she replied, yes, the American government needs to know we are willing to share our land, but not give it away. I do not want my children and your children to be driven off the land of our ancestors. We have given them enough. They should not ask for more. We have raised all of you on the land we now have, which God gave us to inhabit. We do not wish to, to go to an unknown country. Your mothers, your sisters ask and beg of you not to part with any more of our lands. Keep it for our growing children, for it was, it was the goodwill of the Creator to place us here. Keep your hands off paper talks. Warriors take pity and listen to the talk of your sisters. I have a great many grandchildren, and I wish them to do well on our did my chores, but I knew there was more than my eyes could see. I married young, he was brave and strong, but he died fighting for his creed. I took his place, but I vowed someday that we would live in peace. Let there be peace. Let there be love. Let life fly free as the morning dove. Let every heart hear the song I sing. Let there be love. Let there be peace. The wars raged on to the warrior's song, but a change whispered through the wind. The white man's heart beats the same as ours. When will we understand? Our children died and the white wolf cried. All ye people lay down. It's time to lead our hearts to peace That we may live as one Let there be peace Let there be love Let life fly free As the morning dove Let every heart hear the song There be peace. 
possibly 1824, that's a little bit foggy, as I was looking in different references, before the Cherokee removal. At the end of the musical, she sees everyone she has passed before her, and she and all her cast is on stage singing, let there be peace, which is what Nanye wanted for all of her family and for everyone going. I will take you on to the program of this production. This was this year in Catusa at the Hard Rock Casino and Hotel. And uh, you get the, uh, the music and lyric, Becky Hobbs, great music. Like I said, get her CD, it's wonderful. Um, and then act one, all the different scenes. It's over, I would say over two hours and definitely every scene was wonderful. If you're ready, I'll go on to the next slide, but I don't want to go too too quickly here. Here we have the cast um, who is in the orchestra, but I mean, they were playing live. It was wonderful. Your crew and special thanks. Um, the past former uh, Cherokee Nation Principal Chief Bill John Baker was there on the first night. David Hampton was there on both nights because I went to both performances. And then the next slide is our who's who. Uh, one of the exciting things was Winnie Guest Purdue. Um, she's a Cherokee city citizen and she's a descendant of Sequoia. And she is the most amazing lady. When she was young, you know, women were not supposed to do the men's dancing. And she liked the men's dancing. I've always liked the men's dancing better than the women's dancing myself. Um, and so she started at an early age trying to learn the Plains Indians, the hoop, the hoop dance. And she managed to learn it and her dad made her hoops. And if you look her up on the internet, you can see her dancing as a child, the hoop dance and many other dances. And even in that movie Sequoia that is been playing on PBS, um, he's, they feature her and um, she was, she's wonderful. And I'm guessing in this show, she had to be about 83. Uh, so I was, um, she, remembered all her lines and she negoti negotiated stairs on a stage with the lights on. I was very impressed with her. Um, the next slide is where they're buried. And um, so Five Killer, her son is to the left and her brother Longfellow um, is middle. So there's like a tombstone and there's one in the middle of Longfellow. Um, and then over here is um, Five Killer. 
And um, this is near Benton, Tennessee, in the southeastern United States. Whoops, I went too far. Back, here we are. And uh, it's situated along US 411 on a small hill overlooking the OC, OC, OC River. So um, I haven't been there yet. I like the little, I, I don't know if that's a stuffed bear at the top of the, of the one on the right, but it's, it's lovely, a yoni. Uh, my heritage just going bang, bang, bang down is, um, so Nanye, he, I, I couldn't decide if she was my fifth or sixth, but she must be my fifth. So I, I'm, what confuses me is do you count the last great grandmother? But anyway, so she's at the top. I put her and her husband, Chula Kingfisher, is where my, my relationship to her comes from, from her daughter, Katie, uh, Catherine Kingfisher. And Catherine uh, married Ellis Harlan, and that they had a daughter named Nancy or Nanny Harlan who lived from 1764 to 1841. And then Nancy Harlan married Caleb Starr. Now they, some of them had more husbands and more wives, but I'm just talking about my direct lineage. <laughs> um, and they had Exiel Starr, Ezekiel Starr. I always say that one incorrectly, Ezekiel. In, he was born in 1802 and he died in 1846. Ezekiel married Mary Polly Upshaw and of one of their many children, they had, had James Hickory Starr. He lived from 1833 to 1901. And James Hickory Starr married Sarah S. Byers and she lived 1833 to 1866. And they had Mary Starr, one of their many children, and she lived 1853 to 1901. So Mary Starr is my great grandma. She married James Manuel Price. He lived from 1844 to 1905. And of their many children was my grandpa, Mac Elsie Price, who was, lived 1883 to 1966. Mac Elsie Price married Kate Bell Holder, Katie Bell Holder, who lived from 1888 to 1974, and um, they had 10 children. My dad, Maxie Edward Price, was one of the 10. He lived 1916 to 1988. And then my dad, Maxie Edward Price, married Catherine Jordan. She lived 1914 to 2007, and they had me and my sister. I didn't put my sister on here, who's not with us anymore. And I was born in 1945. And then um, I married Les, Lester Dean Baudet, who I'm not married to anymore, but he is the father, the biological father of my children. Um, he was born in 1949. He was a dancer like me. And we had Sean Leon Baudet. He was born in 1978. And Irmalee Ferreco Baudet, born in 1981. I gave her the name Irmalee Ferreco for a stage name. <laughs> and she did want to be a dancer at one point, but she's not. Um, and then Sean uh, married Raquel Guico. She's from the Philippines. She was born in 74. He was born in 78. And they've had three children. Isabella Sofia Baudet was born in 2008. And Gabriella Madison Baudet was born in 2010. And Madison Alexander Baudet was born in 2014. So that's that's a direct lineage from my line. And I really didn't uh, completely know this. I'd heard of the lore in our family, but I it wasn't really, I don't think, I think it's been almost a year that I really clarified that and knew that. And I sure was very excited about it, I have to say. Um, the Association of Descendants of Nancy Ward, uh, you can go to nancyward.org. Um, it's a membership in the Association of the Descendants of Nancy Ward. It's open to anyone interested in Cherokee history or genealogy. You don't have to be a descendant. Uh, persons who are direct descendants of Nancy Ward or spouses or parents of direct descendants may join as lineal members 
and other people can join as associate members. And the dues are very reasonable. It's $15 a year. And you mail it to the Association of the Descendants of Nancy Ward, Post Office Box 2138, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Facebook has a, a, quite a few, um, and I've just listed three. Uh, there's the Descendants of Nancy Ward, Nanyehi. There's the Nancy Ward Descendants, and then there's the descendants of Caleb and Nancy Starr. So I went to the um, descendants of the Nancy Ward Association, and I met one of my cousins, Judy Adair. We both share Caleb Starr. Um, and that was very exciting to meet people. This is the first time I've ever been to one of these. So I was exceptionally excited. And David Hampton is the president. And they gave a presentation from Sharon Ray, who, like her hair, she is just the most colorful human being. They gave it to Becky Hobbs, who well deserved that award. And they gave a nice, beautiful corsage um, to Winnie Guest Purdue and also talked about her many accomplishments and how Cherokee Nation is so very proud of her. And we are very proud of her as Cherokee citizens. Uh, here is the pictures that I took outside at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Catoosa, Oklahoma. Uh, as you go along the highway, they have a big sign, you can't miss it. And then uh, that's a picture of the outside of the hotel. And all the way up the top, there's some um, scaffolding. And that's the 19th floor. And that's the steakhouse way at the top. And they're doing some remodeling at the top. The bottom floor is an immense floor of gambling machines. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I was in Vegas, but I've never seen anything like this. And, um, and then they have this giant guitar outside where you're getting ready to go into the theater. And I don't know if Shelly's on tonight, but, uh, or this afternoon, she came to the performance on Saturday night. And so we were able to um, meet in the lobby and we couldn't, we sat together for the second half. Her ticket was way far away from me. And then she came over and sat with us. So that was, that was very special that she was able to be there. Um, they talked about the Trail of Tears Association, which I, I don't think I really knew very much about. And they have a conference coming up. This is their website. And it tells you a bit about the conference, the dates of it. It's going to be in Cherokee, North Carolina from September 19th to the 21st. So a um, little less than a year from now. And the first day, uh, there's divided up groups. The second day, it's visiting the mounds. I don't know much about the mounds in North Carolina. I was born in Fort Bragg, North Carolina during the war, but I never have been there as we left right away. I think I was five months old, four months old, something like that, never been back. So I, I wanna go to this, I'm looking forward to it. And the last day is breakout rooms um, for all the members and they have conferences or I don't even know exactly what they're gonna have. So it'll be new for me. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Uh, Mary, could we share your PowerPoint with people and just let them download it and play it themselves? Yes, yes. Um, and I gave that to you in the Dropbox. Um, yeah, are you able I'll to... take care of that. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because the music is really, it goes along with it. And um, I also have another thing if you're interested. I don't know baby Bob would be interested for this especially. I did um, a more complex um, thing. I'll share my screen one more time. And this one. So bring it over. So Mary, I put a link into the chat. So everybody, if you want to, you can download the PowerPoint and play that directly. Oh, thank you. That's great. Thank you. Uh, this this is taking you through uh, 
other people that not, you know, she married uh, Brian Ward and they had one daughter. From as much as I can see, they, they uh, Betsy Ward, their daughter didn't have any children. And I'm not, they, wait, yeah. And so I'm not, I don't know. I was trying to, to look for that for you, Joseph, but I've got more work to do on that. <laughs> um, so then I go down to, you know, because um, Katie, uh, she married uh, first her first husband, what was Samuel Candy, John Walker, and late, later Alice Harlan. So that's where I came in was Alice Harlan. Um, and so then they, I went through the children that she had with Samuel Katie. They, they just had one son, Samuel Can Candy, who married Elizabeth West. And then she remarried Johnny Walker and they had two children, John Walker Jr. who later married Elizabeth Sevier, nay Lowry, and Jenny Walker who later married Charles Fox Taylor and later remarried John McIntosh. And then you have when Katie married Alice Harlan, seven children. Well, my math does it that she had nine children. <laughs> That's to me when you have 10, 14, that is a lot of children. <laughs> um, so then I, I highlighted mine, but you may see yours in this line um, going through. Um, I'll try to go through this very slowly as much as you would like. Um, so Nancy Harlem and Caleb Starr had 12 children. So Ezekiel Starr um, and Mary Polly Upshaw is where I'm come in with Judy Adair. So we come all the way down, but we're still really connected, which is exciting. Um, so I went through all of their different people that they were, their children and who they married. Um, please tell me if I'm going too quickly. There's more children here. And you know, women died or husbands died. So people remarried, they died in childbirth. There's all kinds of reasons why they had so many husbands. It's different than today. <laughs> um, so Ezekiel married Mary Polly Upshaw and they had 11 children all together. Um, and it's funny, I had a doctor in Norman, Oklahoma named Dr. Buffington, and I'm now thinking he was a relative of mine. Because <laughs> so when I saw that, I was like, oh, how funny. Um, he was a rural doctor, country doctor, literally a country doctor. And uh, yeah, I can send this to you, Joseph, and you can put that, or I don't know if I put that in the thing for you, this, this more. <laughs> You know, can you did. You can certainly make a link for it. I will. Okay, because I want to include that for you. Thank you. Um. So then James Hickory Starr married Sarah Byers, and they had three children: Mary Starr, Elizabeth Starr, George Washington Starr. And then he remarried a uh, Emma Jane Evans Nay Ryder, and they had six children. And there's your Jesse Bellstar. So a lot of people are always like, am I related to Jesse Bellstar? Well, I guess in a, a little way I am because of James Hickory Star. And then Mary Starr married James Banyer Price. And they had nine children. And so my Aunt Mary, the only living aunt that I have left on my dad's side, remembers all these people. I've, I've got, I've, I recorded her talking about them. She especially mentions Undine. And I don't remember meeting them as children. My, my parents, ha I mean, my grandparents, Mac, Elsie Price, Katie Bell Holder had 10 children. I had 23 cousins. So, a family reunion was like the children had to stay outside. 
there were so many people. Um, uh, so those are all my aunts and uncles. And so Mary, Mary Price is the last one who's now Mary Harrison left and she is 90. And then my dad, and then my sister and I, she passed away in 1996 and I married, I'm married to Richard Wheel. We've been married over 36, I think 37 years now. Um, and then, um, we had, I have two children and three grandchildren. So um, it's quite a Heather, isn't it? It's quite a what? Quite a legacy from, you know, one, one person all together. That's a lot of people that all tie together. It is, it's pretty extraordinary. And I haven't even done my other, my mother, a little bit my mother. Um, no, I've got a lot more stuff to do, but this, the Cherokee one got, became so exciting. I just couldn't, I had to get it done. I had to go through them all. But as I had heard the lore of that we were related, 